In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ 
may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. For who can learn the counsel of God, or who can discern what the Lord wills? For the reasoning of mortals is worthless, and our designs are likely to fail. For a perishable body weighs down the soul, and this earthly tent burdens the thoughtful mind. We can hardly guess at what is on earth and what is at hand when we, face with, when we find with labor, but who has traced out what is in heaven? Who has learned your counsel unless you have given wisdom and sent your Holy Spirit from on high? And thus the paths of those on earth were set right, and people were taught what pleases you and were saved by wisdom. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Philemon. Beloved, I, Paul, do this as an old man, and now also as a prisoner of Christ Jesus. I am appealing to you for my child Onesimus, whose father I have become during my imprisonment. I am sending him, that is, my own heart, back to you. I wanted to keep him with me so that he might be of service to me in your place during my imprisonment for the gospel. But I preferred to do nothing without your consent in order that your good deed might be voluntary and not something forced. Perhaps this is the reason he was separated from you for a while, so that you might have him back forever no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a beloved brother. Especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So if you consider me your partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and said to them, Whoever comes to me and does not hate their father and mother 
spouse and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even their life itself, cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build the tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, this fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going out to wage war against another king will not sit down first and consider whether he's able with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000? If he cannot, then while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for the terms of peace. So therefore, whoever of you does not give up all their possessions cannot be my disciple. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, dear brothers and sisters, in the Gospel, Jesus tells us that our relationship with him comes first. Jesus, I'm sure, doesn't want us to hate anyone. And in the gospel, he was just making a point because our God is a jealous God. He created each one of us out of love to have a unique relationship just with him. It's like a couple who are deeply in love. If anyone comes between them, their relationship becomes compromised. And so when we commit to making Jesus our first priority, all of the other relationships will become that much better. To have that intimate relationship with Christ, we will then know his heart and will understand the love that he has for others. The more we love Jesus, the more capacity we will have to love. And in baptism, we become part of God's family, but we also then participate in his mission right here on earth. And that mission, as St. Paul encourages us, is to fight the good fight of faith, which involves living the truth and speaking the truth in love. The world does not like the truth, and therefore we engage in this battle of truth versus lies and good against evil. This is obvious today. Even Tucker Carlson, a very popular news commentator on Fox News, admitted in an interview that he can see no other explanation for the turmoil that's going on. And he also believes there's an intense fight of good against evil, which is being manifested here on earth, but also in the heavenly realm. Things are no longer what they appeared to be in the past, and evil has a grip on many of our institutions. And so as baptized children of God, we've been enlisted in this fight, and we already know that God wins in the end. But we get to participate in order to receive our reward at the end of time. In Philippians chapter 1, verse 29, it tells us, for it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ, you should not only believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake, engaged in the same conflict which you saw and now hear to be mine. And so we're in the same fight that the early apostles and the saints throughout the ages have been involved in. In Ephesians, St. Paul tells us that in order to engage in this battle, we need to put on the whole armor of God, which involves the belt of truth, the shoes of readiness to preach the gospel, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the word of God, 
which is the sword. And then he goes on to say, pray at all times in the spirit. And so we are most powerful in battle when we're on our knees praying and making supplication to God who answers prayer. And just because nothing happens immediately doesn't mean that God is ignoring our prayers. He often waits for the appropriate time and he speaks to us in our hearts. In the apparitions of Our Lady, she has asked us to pray the rosary daily and to make sacrifices for souls. Even if we can't lift a finger to, due to illness, we can still be engaged through our prayers by offering up our sufferings. We find strength by receiving the sacraments regularly, especially the Eucharist and the Sacrament of Reconciliation. And by speaking the word and living the word, which is the truth, without compromise, evil will flee. Just like the devil did in the desert when Jesus quoted the word out of the book of Deuteronomy. And so if we love Jesus and are committed to him more than anything, he will be with us no matter what to help us fight our battles here on earth. But like any good marriage or close relationship, it requires dedication and work. And if we really want to change our lives and experience that peace that surpasses all understanding, all we need is more of Jesus. His love far exceeds any love we could ever experience with our spouses or our friends here on earth. Isn't it time to take our relationship with Jesus just that one step further? All we have to say is, Jesus, I'm all yours. Nothing or no one comes before you. And this is when our lives will continue to be transformed. It's a game changer, especially when we feel like we're going through our trials all by ourselves. Everyone here, in one way or another, is involved in some kind of struggle right now. It may involve an illness, or a relationship, or even an addiction. It could be something small or something monumental. But Jesus can really help to transform it all to good. He's our closest, most trustworthy companion. Now the Bible tells us that with God, we will do valiantly until he calls us home to be with him in heaven. And so like the song says, onward Christian soldiers marching out to war with the cross of Jesus going on before. At the sign of triumph, Satan's host will flee on then Christian soldiers, on to victory. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us then and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us call upon the Lord, our refuge and strength in every age, and offer these prayers for ourselves and for all who are in need. That in his concern for his holy people, God will raise up many more men and women to serve the church in the priesthood and consecrated life. We pray to the Lord. that the wisdom of God will fill the hearts and minds of all in public office, that they will seek to promote the common good and respect the rights and dignity of all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord that all who serve the gospel in missionary endeavors, especially those who may be called to witness to the witness of martyrdom, will be encouraged by the power of the Holy Spirit we pray to the Lord, Lord that all God's people, especially those who suffer from poverty, oppression, or warfare, especially the people of Ukraine, Nigeria, and Nicaragua, will know the Lord's peace and comfort. We pray to the Lord, Lord that peace and reconciliation will prevail among all people, especially between the church and our indigenous brothers and sisters here in our country. We pray to the Lord. Lord that the Spirit of God will guide, bless, and protect all teachers and students as they begin a new academic year, especially the faculty, staff, and students of our parish schools and the Newman Center. We pray to the Lord, Lord that God's abundant goodness will be poured out upon those who are sick or suffering, whether in body, mind, or soul, especially our suffering parishioners. We pray to the Lord, Lord that God, who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead, will welcome our deceased loved Tony McCann and Ren Redenter Garcia into their everlasting home, especially John Murray. We pray to the Lord. Lord Let us offer our prayers to Almighty God through the intercession of our Blessed Lady as we pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray, pray for, for us sinners, now, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. For the O oh God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that, through this offering, we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh Lord be with you, and with your spirit, lift up your heart, we will Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering cancelled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and, recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Patrick, St. Bartholomew, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, Douglas our Bishop, Wayne his auxiliary, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O oh God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. We dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. There are a number of announcements, so please be seated. The first isn't really an announcement, it is a couple of welcomes. And the one of them is very, very overdue. Uh, hopefully you have noticed, as I have, that uh, since we've returned to something approaching normal, we have a number of new families who have been worshiping with us for the last number of, number of months. And we are ever so glad to have you here. What a great sign of hope, especially when I look out and I see families with small children, including the really small children that we hear all through Mass. Now, I read a wonderful line a while back that said, if there are no babies crying, your church is dying. So let the babies cry away on one condition. After they've had all these years to warm up their voices, in a couple of years when Joe says he wants to form a children's choir, there are to be no refusals. The other welcome is to our uh, university and college students. It's uh, wonderful to have you back again worshiping with us, and we hope to see you throughout the, uh, throughout the school year. We are in need of altar servers. I know with the number you see in front of you right now, it doesn't look that way, but we are. Our 515 Mass has no altar servers. Our 9 o'clock Mass has three altar servers. And even for the 11 o'clock Mass, which uh, according to the law that governs a minor basilica, we are to have a solemn mass every Sunday. Uh, we would like to have about two or three teams that can serve a solemn mass. So we need servers. Now, contrary to popular opinion, servers do not have to be between grade four and eight, by which time you retire. Uh, we welcome children grade four and above. We're welcoming teenagers, young adults, older adults, present the body warm and we will talk. But uh, we are desperately in need of altar servers. We will, of course, do training with anyone. Please just uh, see me over the next couple of weeks or call the parish office with your name, phone number, and email address. Please keep our schools in your prayers, our parish schools, the Newman Center at the University of Guelph and the students at Conestoga College. Uh, as they begin a new year, pray for the teachers, the staff, and the students. This year, uh, this week rather, uh, I will be away at the clergy seminar, which, uh, which will be true of just about every priest in the diocese. Father Bill happily will not be, so he will be able to be with us for much of the week. But this week, all daily masses will be at nine o'clock in the morning. That includes Wednesday, this Wednesday only, there will be no 7.30 or 12.15 Mass and no adoration, 9 o'clock every morning. Next weekend is our parish picnic. If you haven't already done so, please get your tickets today so that the organizers know how much uh, food to buy. Tickets are $5 per person. Children under five go free. The parish gift shop is open in the parish hall after Mass. This coming Thursday is the Nativity of Our Lady, and it is one of the days on which a plenary indulgence is granted to those who visit this basilica as the diocesan shrine of our diocese, all of course under the usual conditions. Speaking of Our Lady, many of you are aware that our Holy Father, Pope Francis, has granted a special privilege to this basilica as the shrine of Our Lady to have a solemnly crowned image. Uh, thanks to the assistance of His Eminence Cardinal Roach, the crown has arrived from Rome and was received here into the Basilica yesterday by His Excellency Bishop Lobsinger. If you would like to have a close-up look at the crown before it ends up 20 feet in the air, God willing, without yours truly putting it there, uh, the crown will be over in the Regina Celi Shrine during Sunday Masses. You can go over and take a look. 
The Young Adults Book Study is canceled for this week in this week. It will resume on September 21st. Also, there will be no sung Latin Mass this coming Saturday. That will resume in October. The lights at the Regina Chaley Shrine this week burn for the intentions of Basil Kraski and the intentions of Bill, Heidi, and Lucas Kraski. If you would like the lamps to burn for your intentions or in memory of a loved one, please call the parish office. And finally, uh, one of our senior serving team will be leaving us for a while. Robin Mendoza will be leaving in just over a week to begin his studies for the priesthood for the Diocese of Hamilton at the Royal English College in Valladolid, Spain. Robin, please be assured that you will be in our prayers and we look forward to seeing you back at Christmas. God bless you. Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.